why is someone sending a 7z file must be from Europe dude I don't want to download Open a 7z file. I have to open a 7z file. Visual Studio. It's like having an entire studio on your computer. No, I don't want to sign in. Start Visual Studio. Start Visual Studio! I know how to look at folder. There we go, Visual Studio. We make debug compiler. Oh god. We have conflicts. Okay, so I just I was changing that and I never right. cool. Cool. Back from Paris? Is that a joke because my title was opening ceremony a couple streams ago? I almost didn't get it. Okay, get final declaration. That's a bummer. All right, let's see. Let's see what we're doing here. Okay, we have breakpoints from like six months ago, last time we worked on this compiler on this computer. Yeah, those can't be set. Okay, Visual Studio is so fucking stupid sometimes. Okay, call stack, exit. Okay, so we didn't, oh, with no jobs, it's fine. No, it's not. So what happened? What? Okay, this is, oh, I see. Yeah, I didn't see that this had LLVM in it. All right, so we usually do x64 because it's faster than LLVM. But the bug is in the LLVM situation. Entry was no. It is null. Info, what the hell is info? 
Okay, so his description is importing a module with a non-filled placeholder causes an internal compiler error. interesting so the module has a placeholder in it and we're not so the problem really is that we should be telling people that the placeholder was not filled do we not do that if nobody uses it Like if I do this, it's not even import. Let's not dump. It's a very simple program. Very simple program. All right. So which window is which? I need to start using Microsoft PHD terminal just so I can tell the difference between the windows. Did I down? I feel like I downloaded Microsoft PHD terminal, but that might have been onto my other computer. All right. We're going to download Microsoft PHD Terminal. Install Windows Terminal from Microsoft Store. Okay, that really Why do they have a web page that says Microsoft Store? Like, do they just not even bother to open the actual Microsoft Store anymore? Okay, so I guess I installed it. I just couldn't launch it. What is it called? Okay, I really can't tell the fucking difference between this and this in the alt tab view. So we're gonna we're gonna set some background color or something. Appearance. Application theme dark. There's no way to set the color. Like this is too, you don't want actual black for your background. That's like fucking stupid. Color schemes. Ah, it's right below appearance. So color schemes are not appearance. Solarized dark. There we go. That's much better. Set as default. Okay, but we still don't get it. We have to, do we have to relaunch the thing? Oh, no, we just had to hit save. All right. The text here is actually not high contrast enough. Because these people, they don't know how to do things. All right. Um, color schemes. Can I modify? So foreground is going to be... This is a shitty color picker. Dude, our color picker that we distribute in GetRect is better than this. Um, also, why don't you show me like the window while I'm fucking doing this? Like, how am I supposed to, how am I supposed to do this? This is really stupid. All right, you just keep going to this window. It's like a first person shooter when you're changing your like mouse sensitivity. You just have to keep going to options and trying it out. OK. 
can snap it in the tab. Okay, well, too late. This is what we're going with for now. I don't love it. See, the problem is, well, we won't go into it. The differences of opinion, it's fine. All right, so I'm not going to try to set the hotkeys in the fucking JSON file. Okay, there we go. So he sent me a 7-zip file for this. You could have just imported that as a string. Okay, so this is interesting because if I do just my file here, okay, well, interesting. So right now, we do not actually require you to fill a placeholder if you don't use it, which might be fine. I'm actually going to leave that capability. One thing we could do is just catch that error earlier in the compiler, but we're not going to do that. Let's make this guy's repro more ergonomic. So if we just go import string that, right, that should do it. There we go. Um, so this is going to be our repro case that we check in. We didn't need to download 7-zip file manager. Um, why is this not responding? All right. By the way, guys, in terms of everything getting worse, the number one bane of my existence now is on the phone. I use the little YouTube app. And now every time I open it on the phone, it like restarts. It's got a loading screen. The YouTube app has a loading screen now. And every single time you open it now, it does the loading screen and then resets any context that you had. It's very sad. Oh, people are asking about the snacks. Uh, it's dried apples. Okay. So we're going to go back to our simple repro case. Here we go. And uh, so now let's fix the problem. So this is one of these things where we've got this info arrow globals array. And like the problem is somebody put a thing that was null into that array. So the problem, you know, this is a very common thing in software. Like the problem is set up by some other piece of code and then the data is wrong and then you're crashing, right? Like the, a shitty way to solve this would just be if this is null, continue and skip it. 
which we could do. And it would probably fix the crash unless someone else iterates later over this array and does the same thing. But the, the right thing to do is um, to I forgot all about this. Um, I've <laughs> uh, globals. So LLVM write global. So we're just going to put this here and we're going to rerun. And now we should trip that assert. And then this will be the code that is causing the problem or much closer to the code that's causing the problem. Sometimes you have to walk backwards like this in several steps. Okay. For scope members. Okay, wait. Is this going to be out of scope? God, dude, Visual Studio is such a piece of shit. All right, we're going to put int k equals 1 here and recompile so we can debug. Such a fucking piece of shit. I can't believe that's still... I mean, I guess I'm using 2019, but that's also because 2022 is unusable for other reasons. So it's their fault, ultimately. But like they still release updates for 2019. Why is this this bad? Okay. So this is weird because I wouldn't think that this would be a declaration. Oh wait, are placeholders declarations? Scope entry flags one. I don't remember what one is. Want scope export, okay. This is identifier A. In, oh, the using makes an import link. Okay. Which I think is the right, is the right thing to do? Question mark. Yeah, okay, so it, it links the placeholder. Okay. So this is, this is really questionable. So here's, this is another interesting case where we basically want to detect this and allow it. But we don't want to be super soft and allow a lot of other mistakes that might happen. Because this is a legit kind of mistake that might happen. Like, oh, for some reason, we ended up in the LLVM backend and calling write globals, and we haven't actually finished compiling yet or whatever, because it's a complicated dependency engine thing. Um, in that kind of case, you want, well, we should, we should actually detect that the declaration is, is not null, um, no matter what. And we should assert on that. But basically, we're going to detect, do I have an is unfilled placeholder? No. Um, OK. We want to allow this case. All right, so we're just gonna, we're gonna put a few lines of code in there to filter out this exact thing. So 
line 1831, we're going to say currently we allow unfilled a program to compile if it has unfilled placeholders as long as you don't try to use those variables. Um, if a module contains a placeholder and you import the module, you can get an import link to that placeholder, but get final declaration returns null. Let's look at the declaration of that because Um, you know, this might be, I don't know if this handles placeholders correctly. Hmm, we'll worry about that later. Um, it is really windy outside. Okay, so. Um, We check for this case and allow it, but in order to be good at reporting bugs, we ice if the declaration is null for any other reason. All right, so Actually, this is say continue. We're just going to continue the loop. And then we're going to say, um, what are we going to say? We're going to say, aren't my colors a lot better than Microsoft PhD terminal colors? I'm just saying. I'm just saying, okay. These are like colors I did in 10 minutes, like 20 years ago too. Okay. Interp ice, do we have interp? I don't know. I don't know how to get that variable. We'll find out. I kind of want to go outside and have fun in the wind, but it's dark. Look how windy it is. Um, Deckel in the LVM backend, we are trying to write globals, but this declaration 
does not link to a final result for some reason. That's fine. Possible loss of data. 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 All right. Well, that didn't compile. What the shit? Oh, fuck. I have to go edit this on both of my computers now to not be... Like, why? Why don't you guys make a feature good before you make it the default? How do I turn this shit off? What's the settings? Like literally every time. Tools options. Fucking. Um, build. Or something. Where is it? Projects and solutions. Error. Okay, not that. Maybe we'll leave that. I don't know. All right. It's like, why didn't they just highlight the errors in the output? That would have been like a thousand times easier to program and a thousand times more useful. It's so annoying that they don't. is like a subclass it's a it's a contrapositive downcast uh, reporter all right okay um we still Wow, okay. I should have continued here as well. Um, I don't understand what's going on. Oh, we're crashing here for some reason now. We're crashing in a different... What is going on, dude? Here, I said LLVM write global. Oh, I want to know what that function does. Let's try to use Visual Studio and say go to definition. Okay, that's... The, it's in the middle of do primary module setup for some... Like, what is going on? What is going on? All right. Cursor. Oh, duh, cause, okay. I am, I am silly. It's supposed to be it. We know decal is null because we asked if it's null, like literally right there. That is what happens when my brain is on drugs. All right, so we have made this work. Let's run tests in LLVM. We want to make sure we didn't break anyone else. Boy, this is so slow. Dude, running LLVM tests is so slow. All right, I will meanwhile optimistically report to the person this is fixed in the next beta. Dude, he reported this on May 20th, but to be fair, I've been kind of busy. Okay, and we'll put that in the change log optimistically.
Okay. Um, fixed a crash in the LVM backend when a um, when a when an unfilled placeholder is imported from a module. Okay. Hey, we passed, we passed the Teus. All right, that's value. Anything else we do is gravy because we, we delivered a unit of value. Well, we haven't delivered it yet, okay, but it will be delivered. A unit of value will be delivered to the people. Okay. Um, Anonymous struct is argument a polymorphic function calls incompatible structs. Interesting. Okay. Um, I feel like we're not going to fix this right now because huh. Yeah, so here's what's going on. By definition in the language semantics, two structs are different types, even if they look the same. It's how you can have strong typing across a program, you know, etc. Um, we could think about changing that rule, by the way, because it's just a rule I made up in the beginning to be very conservative about type matching, and maybe we don't actually care. But right now, two structs are by definition different types. If, even if they look the same. The thing is when you do a polymorphic function, which in this case we have a value bake, um, we actually you know, we recompile the function for every value. That's what this dollar sign means. Because we're recompiling the function, we get two different structs. And that's, okay, that's kind of bad, but that's not even the problem. The problem is that for some reason, we match against one struct actually i'm not sure that we should be recompiling this struct i'm not sure what the problem is this is however uh i'm gonna let this slide for now because i want to work on because it's been a little bit since I fixed bugs, so I want to work on like crashes and stuff. Like weird language semantics, we can let slide. I am going to chalk this up as a slightly longer term issue and think about how to solve it for a bit. All right. He reported that literally two and a half months ago, so. Minor bug fix for system get home directory on Windows. Get home directory, system module. Their config files cannot be saved in the directory returned by this function. Might contain non-ASCII characters. Um, hmm. 
maybe we should change this for now. But the policy, okay, let's, let me paste, uh, I won't dox this person, but let me paste in the email. It's, you know, we're using, um, we're not, we're not using UTF-8 to wide, right? We're using get end. Um, And the thing is, uh, longer term is that UTF-8 is supported by all API calls. Um, so I wonder, without having to use wide strings, What is the status of this thing? What is the, like, if you use getEnv, regular getEnv, right? I thought the whole thing with Windows was um, getEnv now will handle non-ASCII characters correctly and put them in UTF-8 if you're, like, in the right code page or whatever, right? Or something. Um, I thought that was going to be the default eventually. What's the deal with it? The application needs a manifest to enable it or something. Okay. So we probably should change this function. I think it is the right thing to change this for now. Not having to use wide strings, which would simplify a lot of code and make it more efficient. However, right now I think programs need to turn this on you know, for something. UTF-8, let's see. Like why, why did they do this? It's like, okay, we're gonna support this, but we're gonna make you bend over fucking backwards to actually get it to work. Unlike all Unixes, which just said, hey, this is how our strings work. Standard Microsoft excuse backwards compatibility. Yeah, but like, then let me, okay, if that's what you're gonna do, then give me just a third function that says my program understands this, right? Just let me call, you know, instead of the A or the W, let me call the U function. Like, it's so much simpler than having to have some fucky fuck manifest in your program. And like, like, why do they think this is a good idea? It's horrible, dude. Look at all of this. <laughs> there's a, there's a web URL. Like they thought that was a good idea. Like, is this even valid? Let's see, let's find out if this, if they're maintaining this. 
No. So like you have to use a web URL scheme, but already within five years, they've stopped doing it. Like none of this makes any sense. This is complete amateur hour. It's, it's total imposter syndrome at all levels. You never understood why they have URL. Well, it's a, it's in principle an idea that you could have where you say like, look, hey, a string uniquely identifies the, the resource. So, um, let's make that unambiguous by like providing the information at a URL. As opposed to you have to know where to look it up, right? If it's self-identifying, that kind of makes sense. But it doesn't help if you like don't maintain it. Maybe it just needs to have an S. Let's find out. I doubt it. Yeah, it's it's moved. It's been removed. Had its name changed or is temporarily unavailable. Great guys, thank you, thank you. Uh, we're gonna probably add a little more value, although maybe not because I'm I'm getting a little tired. It's 10 p.m. I did a thing yesterday where I went to the coffee shop, one of the ones that I go to a lot, and there's a tea that I really like, and I drank really a lot of it. And that meant that I woke up in the middle of the night last night and didn't get a normal amount of sleep. All right, what are we even doing? We're not doing this. All right, so I'm just going to tell this person that we're going to fix it. This is such a mess, dude. Why, why did Microsoft make such a mess? All right. Um, system. Get home directory. So the version that they gave us was this. Um, this should not... This should not be a to do. This should be assert false um, get home directory with a username argument not yet supported on Windows. Why is that in the API then? All right. So we're going to wgetEng. Yeah. All right. UTF-8 to wide new user profile. Temporary allocator, that's great. Result. Okay, and then, yeah, so this is just alongside everything else. All right. Keep this alphabetical module uh, module system uh, get home directory on Windows is wget instead of get end so that um, non ASCII characters are supported. 
thwarted. We wish could just use the new Windows facility for this, but that is controlled at the application level, so there's no way to write leaf code that just works. Thanks, Microsoft. All right, such amateur hour, dude. Such amateur hour. Oh, four tests failed. Oh, um. Oh, we didn't. We don't have a cert in system. Did we import basic? Oh, yeah. Basic dot assert. We, we just kept it namespaced, all right? We just kept it namespaced. Var name. Oh, yeah, because I renamed it. All right. We're just going to assume it all worked. So. That is another iota of value. All right. Um. I'm looking for, I've just got a lot of reports here that have piled up. Um, a const parameter with the same name and type. Let me just try reproing this. So like this, he's saying is a crash for some reason. Boom. Awesome. So we're inferring the identifier and it's resolving to itself. Normally, like what happens if we take out the dollar sign? Attempt to use a value inside its own declaration. So we detect it there, but for some reason, when there's a dollar sign, we don't do that. Uh, let's use Visual Studio. Um, okay, where is this? This is in resolve one ident. So this is before ident infer part two. Ident infer part two gets called, it, it's like Leonard part six. It gets called at the bottom down here somewhere. Or no, maybe it gets called before this. Part Two. I didn't infer part two. Okay, that's up here. I see. So we call resolve one ident, then we return, then we call ident infer part two. So this is the thing. For some reason, In this case, we don't catch this in resolve one ident. Why not? It's a good question. All right. I'm kind of hungry. So we're going to see where the crash is, and we're going to sort of walk it back. Ident infer part two. Well, it's an assertion, right? Oh, we're asserting that it's not flattened. 
Um, so we could detect a situation here, but it's my claim that we should have detected it earlier. So here, we want to know why didn't that happen also I might get a snack again Okay, um, resolve one ident. Okay, so wait, what, what was the string? Inside its own declaration. Why didn't I see that? Inside its own declaration. So that's down there. So the question is, do we return before that for some reason? I don't know. We're just doing stuff. So if it's got a value bake, right, we exit early and do not detect the situation. Literally, it's literally the line before. Okay, this is an easy fix. I think we literally just swap these. I think we just move this down here. All right. Ta da! Do I have any meetings tomorrow? I'm trying to decide how late to stay up. I do not have meetings tomorrow. All right. You know what? You know what we just did? I'm going to run these while I go get a snack because the dried apples were not enough.
I also, in addition to being tired, I kind of have a headache because this one cafe that I like going to where I drank too much caffeine is ergonomically poor. Um, and it causes like the, the table is like too high for the seats and it kind of messes up my neck. And so I've got that going on too. I've got a weird headache from that. All right, I'm going to reply saying this is fixed in the next beta. And um, I'm going to close email after that because you know what? This is going to be the last value because I also want to deliver value to bed. So we're going to say um, fixed a crash when <laughs> this is very specific. When a declaration inside a value baked procedure, a parameter declaration inside a value baked procedure uses its own name in its definition. All right. So We're just going to send this out. This isn't that many changes, but it's value for the people. And uh, we'll see. We'll see how things go. Hard to find a good coffee shop for working. It's actually pretty easy here. Um, it's pretty easy here. Like I have, let me think of how many different places are in the rotation. Like before I even think about driving to Denver, just like not that far. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm probably forgetting a couple. There's like nine or 10 places that I prefer to go. And then there's a bunch that are just like not my favorite. So it's a good, it's, it's easy here. Add a foregrip to the cafe. Plus three ergo dude. Is Tarkov still alive or did it just die when they pissed off everybody this year? Was it one of the factors in choosing to move here? Probably, but not, not one of the biggest ones. Everyone mad? What's everyone mad about now? Okay, we're going to put the date on here. What is the date? August 4. Dude, I started this beta, I think, at the beginning of 2020. There have been people in the beta for almost four years. It's almost like Gmail, dude, at this point. Okay, so... Um, Yeah, okay, so we're just going to check this in. This is our thing, and we're going to go update the version number for the next beta. Oh, no, we didn't actually do that. Dude, it's been so long. <laughs> we got to change it in the thing. Version 92. There we go. There we go. That's that's how we do this. All right. Boom.
I wish I liked playing Tarkov enough to actually play it. Because it would be fun to like main a game like that, but I just can't do it. I'm guessing they still haven't fixed the loading times. The best game that is also the worst game. I know, dude. You can play PvE. I mean, do you get loot the same way? How does it work? AI PMCs. Interesting. Okay, um, we're just waiting for the build server to build the thing. It's still doing it. Takes a few minutes sometimes. Let's make sure it still builds the Soko Ban game while that's happening. It'll take a little bit to start up, probably. A non-violent extraction shooter jalopy sim with stalker anomalies. Is it like actually cool? All right, so, you know, we built our game. Not appropriate for all ages. Oh my goodness. I mean, the game sold really well. Especially for fucking 2024. Every time you stop when you have to make assets, have somebody else make the assets. <laughs> like, what? That doesn't seem like a very hard question. Hey, all right. Release builds passed. Update. 
All right. I don't know if this has the right folder. Nope. All right. Uh, I should have it check both. Because <laughs> I run this on on different computers that use. Okay, first of all, how stupid is it that it's the year 2024 and Windows still doesn't let you just like mount things where you want them and you have to use the drive letters and all that. So like there's that. Oh, it's a good, good thing that I downloaded 7-zip. I forgot we use it for this. All right. Oh, wait. Did I not update? What's going on? What just happened? We put 92 built on August 4. Is the, oh, maybe it's an older, hold on. No, not repo browser, shut up. Like it's things like this guys, like we finished the actual work. All right, 23960, that's, I didn't check in the file, guys, I didn't, I didn't say, oh God, dude, I didn't save the file or something. No, really update the version number for the next beta. So it is the full correct compiler, but we want people to have the right version number. You can mount volumes without drive letters. Yeah, but it doesn't just like automatically work and it's not the default thing. Like why am I seeing drive letters at all in the year 2024? Like what is going on? Yeah, I think what happened was I ran the commit and left the window open. And then I was like, oh, I got to go edit the general.h. And so I did that. But when you run the commit, it scans for what files changed. And then you can change those files afterward, but it'll only commit the files that it detected in that scan. So that's probably what happened. You could look back at the VOD to validate. So now we're just waiting for it to build again. Mm-hmm. 
just eating potato chips that are not very good. You know what we got to do while we're waiting if it's not done yet? You know what we got to do. We're just waiting for the build. Will there be a GOG release? No. The games on GOG don't sell any copies anymore. The store's dead. Like, I can't justify the complexity of making another build that we have to track and maintain because that costs us both in real money and opportunity cost. And, like, we're just not going to make it back. I wish it were different. You're learning engine development. At what point you should start making the actual game? You should start making the game before you start making the engine, if you're making the engine for the game. You don't, it's a classic mistake to like sit there and be like, I'm making an engine, and you do that for 27 years, and then your game never gets done, or it sucks. Don't do that. Why is this such a hard board? Look at this. Okay, we've got a two down there, 17 on the 16, one on the two. We just need this three to go somewhere. Well, green eight can go on green seven after the two pops, 18 on the 19, four on, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, see, that's why, that's why you gotta look ahead, right? Boom, oh, I didn't even, yeah. Um, all right, so eight over here, 18 on the 19. All right, well, it, it all popped off. It's all good. It's all good. Um, two, three, four is all in here, and then this three goes on the four. This six goes on the seven. So it's just the king. So we almost can do this. The problem is just we need somewhere to put the three, four. Because we can't, like if we just throw it in, it's going to be three, four on top. And then the two's not going to pop and we're going to die. Okay, let's do this. And we can at least do queen jack 10 here. And then, okay, if we get 20, all this goes. That's pretty good. I mean, the thing is, the 9 is right where we want to be, right? Oh, let's put the queen, jack, 10 on the king. That's retrograde. That's fine. So this looks like we're making a giant stack, but all this is together, right? So this 4, 3 could go on a 5. Ah, the 5 is really buried. So we can almost do this, right? Because one, two goes in the hole, six up, zero, one, two all pop, and then six could go in the middle, but we don't want to lose that slot. So we need somewhere to put blue six, which is the five that's just down here, right? So if Jack could go, see the problem is these are buried. Why is this game sometimes not immediate? not immediately forthcoming in its scenarios. All right, um, what do we do? Does anyone have an idea here? Anyone, anyone? We could almost do like this six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 here with these. It's just this blue 10. Blue 10 gotta, see these are buried as well. We're at red seven. Where's red seven? It's there, oh! 
Red 7 just pops. Which, this still doesn't go anywhere, but... I mean, it almost... I mean, we could trade it for 9. The problem is... Like, we could put it on this 9. The problem is we die at that point. We die at that point. This is this is rough. This is exactly the rough point. It's like you got some cards, but you got to get over the hump. I'm tempted to do the zero one two, and the reason is because four, you know, three, eh. The problem is this six. Where's five? No, it's down there. Yeah, we just said that. What? This seven is kind of the issue, but if we cleared this out. I don't know. This is hard. This is hard. We could also cowabunga for 20 in some way, right? So if we could put the queen somewhere, or the seven, either one, then four goes up, 20 pops, four goes back on five. And then those can go on three or whatever. Um, five almost can go on six here, right? Dude, this is rough. Let's take a moment and I'm sure our compiler is updated. Hell yeah. Kick that off. Um, I don't know. Do I throw here? What should I do? I kind of feel like we lost. <laughs> like seven Q four. What does that mean? Seven Q four clear 20 to 16, 20, seven Q. Oh, you're just saying that that. Yeah, I know. I said that though, but like, you can't just, put these can't just put these all right how are we doing here hey we got success so there will be a new beta going out very soon should I pop the zero one two and then just try to survive? Let's do that. This is regrettable. This is regrettable. Now we are on the edge of death. I kind of want to move this jack, but it's not good. We are on the edge of death. I feel like that was a really bad idea.
I've never really felt that before where I'm just sitting there with an empty slot and I'm like, dude, I lost already. <laughs> Anyway, rip holio. I'm going to go to bed. Um, but I'm going to send out, for those of you in the beta, I'm going to send out the beta uh, as soon as I end the stream. All right, thanks, everyone. See you later on.